So this is a behind the scenes piece. So we know that viewers tonight are going to get your expert analysis and all that stuff. So I want to ask you about things that they might not know about. Um, so is there, do you have an election night ritual? Is there anything that you do to stay up all night? I mean, what are some of the little things that people wouldn't know just, just from watching the coverage? Diet Coke and licorice. <laughs> what kind of licorice? <laughs> the red ones or the black? Whatever I can get. <laughs> the breakfast of champions, right? Uh, and are we going to see the whiteboard tonight? A form of it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was done in 2000 because it was uh, something that was simple and understandable. And uh, it was more accurate than the, the high price gimmick. <laughs> Now, uh, I don't want to ask you about specific winners, predictions in that sense, but do you have any predictions for what kind of night it's going to be? Are we going to be surprised? Is it going to be a long night? Do you think things are going to shake out fairly early? What's, what's your take on that? No, I think it's going to be a long night. Um, I think that we won't know uh, how many delegates until probably tomorrow maybe midday tomorrow. But we'll have some early indicators. Georgia polls close at 7 p.m., and that's an important state to watch because we'll know uh, how Obama is doing uh, with the various subgroups of voters, men, women, black, white. Um, and we can compare that to how he did in South Carolina and make some judgments as to how much momentum he has or doesn't have. On the Republican side, uh, Romney has spent some time in the suburbs of Atlanta. And if conservatives are going to say, keep this race going, let's not anoint John McCain, I think we'll see some indication of that, early indication in Georgia at 7 p.m. Uh, but, but you can't use that as a model to predict the rest of the, the night. But it gives you some intelligence uh, to... to draw from it and then helps you interpret what else is playing out. Then at 8 o'clock, a whole group of other states. Uh, Hillary Clinton had big leads in New Jersey and Connecticut and Massachusetts. And uh, how much is it closed? And are there any ways to, to uh, interpret the vote? Uh, and those are the kinds of things the viewers are very interested in. Not only who won popular vote, but how many delegates. And are we seeing trends that may be applicable to other parts of the country? Now, this is for the Internet, and, and based on your you know, vast experience of covering elections, has the Internet changed the game? There's just the bloggers and people you know, putting their opinions out there and, and unverified information. And have, you, have you seen it change the way the, the political game is played? Well, it, 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 it affects the dialogue. The campaigns utilize it. They use every resource available to them. You know, before there was television, you know, radio was king and direct mail and all those kinds of, everything has a cycle. Um, when Bill Clinton was elected in 1992, there were 50 pages on the World Wide Web. 50. That's unbelievable. I think there's 5 billion now. That's an unbelievable statistic. And it was 1992. That was, you can remember that. I guess I can. You probably weren't even born yet. Right? Well, no. <laughs> Thank you for flattering uh, you me, but I'm a little older um, than that. But, yeah, I mean, so, so the Internet is a, a, a tool campaign do is what we use. I mean, it's very helpful. You do have to be very careful about incorrect information, about misleading information, about rumors. Uh, but I think the advantages uh, far away the disadvantages in terms of uh, the kind of resource it is for information. Okay, last question. You keep hearing that this is a historic election, that no matter who wins, you have a lot of firsts. Um, you know, Ann said you have the oldest potentially uh, candidate, you have the Mormon, you have the woman, and you have the black man. Can you say a few words about how unique this election cycle really is? Well, it's the first time since 1952 where an incumbent president or vice president is not running. We had Vice President Alvin Barkley, who was running in 52 for just a little while. And uh, it's been 80 years uh, since there has not been a president or a vice president uh, who were out there in a full throttle, aggressive way. Um, so to have two open contests, we started off with 16 candidates. You know, you think back, January 3rd was Iowa. It was only a month ago. It seems like, like a, a century long. ago. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. It's breakneck speed. It's this rampage. Yeah, and um, the amount of money that was spent, the amount of coverage that's been given, uh, it's all very exciting. Uh, and, and, exa and, it, and that's why I think it is a story. It's, to me, it's been by far the most interesting campaign I've ever covered. Really? Because, well, because you have two open races with very interesting candidates, and you have some big issues confronting the country. And I think elections that have big differences on big issues are, are very healthy for democracy. And uh, look at the turnout. People are excited. They're motivated. I can't walk down the street or uh, go to church or a supermarket or a plane or a train where people come up and say, hey, what do you think? <laughs> 
and I love it. There's nothing like it. This is my Super Bowl. <laughs> well, thanks for your time. All I right. appreciate it. All right.